as of this today, this weekend, for Monday through Friday, I for the Saturday and Sunday, I put five cards each each day. So I got 25 for Saturday, 25 for Sunday already scheduled. I don't have to list Saturday and Sunday. In today's video, we're gonna go over four things. What sold, the special topic, the poll or data or something like that, and viewer comments. Now to what sold, I only have 10 cards sold to show you today, but my average sale price went up a little bit. I was pretty happy with what I got on some of these. And then the special topic is Mormon postcards. The full name is Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or they have an abbreviation of LDS. They're low, based out of Salt Lake City, Utah, with the big cathedral and the choir everybody knows. We're going to dive a little deeper into the history of the Mormons, where they came from, and what they're doing today. And got some tips from other resellers about what to look for in these cards. So when we hit the special topic after what's sold, I'll get into that. And I'll show you some Mormon cards while I talk about it. Then I always try to put in a poll or some data that I'm doing. And the poll that I put out on Saturdays, they come out at 10 a.m. So make sure you subscribe so you can see these polls. But it's good information from other resellers, not just me. But this one was when mailing postcards, do you? Do you put them in a mailbox? Do you go to the post office? I wanted to see what other resellers were doing. So I'm going to go over the stats with that. And I got some viewer, uh, comments on that poll and what other people do. And then the viewer comments. There's about three or four comments that come in email or whatever. It gives the different opinions. And I'll share mine. I like that section the best. But let's go ahead and get into the what's sold. Again, I only had 10 cards sold. But I'll go through each one real quick. And then I'll give you a total on how I did. So this card here is a real photo postcard that I got from that Nashville pickup. It's basically the title was Lady on Front Porch of Large House, RPPC. And this sold between five and six dollars. If you know it's a house and a lady said, what else? I'm gonna say tree, whatever. So when I write some of these, they're one of a kind basically to a point and I just said lady standing on porch of a large house and this sold within 24 hours so five to six dollars wasn't much going on in that one this is another real photo postcard and rppc stands for real photo postcard not picture postcard so you hear people when they speak it they'll say real photo when they write it they say rppc i have a tendency to say rppc both times but that's the etiquette that i've read or heard about is if you speak it, it's real photo. If you write it, it's RPPC. So I miss, uh, screw that up all the time. But this is a naval ship, a photo postcard. And you'll see that sometimes on the back. But you got to be careful. Sometimes they might be, they'll take a newer card and glue it on the back of one of these. And glue a back like this on there. So sometimes you want to be careful with that but i don't see it that often but it, it is out there where people redo these postcards and stuff but this is the uss yellowstone 80 something but this was a real photo postcard of a navy ship that i got and this sold for seven dollars and seventy cents i think a gentleman asked me what this was and stuff so i just found the definition of a real photo postcard a couple days later he bought it so for 770 with a 10% offer probably sent to them. It worked out pretty well. Next one is another real photo postcard. Not our PPC. See, I'm doing better in this video. Our, a real photo, almost screwed it up there. Real photo postcard of a guy and a horse. It's vertical going this way. There's the horse and there's a the guy. And that's it. That's all that's in there. And that's basically what I put in the title. Now, if you look on the back of real photo postcards, you see this box. It's got A-Z-O, Azo, and it's got triangles in all four corners, and they're pointed up. And you're saying, well, what does that mean? Well, in my Ko-Fi store, I have where well, you can download for free how to read that stamp boxes for real photo postcards you can actually date them to a certain era kind of and you can go there and here's the link right down here and just search for stamp box you can print it out but if you'd like to have a card like this sent to you then it's just a dollar fifty i'll print one out or i have some printed out i'll just stick them in an envelope the dollar fifty pays for the stamp and the ink and everything like that but you can download it for free i use it all the time so this one right here it says azo right there 
AZO, AZO, four triangles pointed up, 1904 to 1918. So what I usually do when it says 1904 to 1918, I just put C for circa, circa 1915. It kind of puts it in the middle. So a lot of these real photo postcards I've been doing lately, I've been able to get it in the title, some kind of year, more than just man, horse, and I'll put circa 1915. If I see it now, there is some paper, cycle paper, um, different things like that you can get into, but that's the easiest thing I found. So check out the Ko-Fi, go out and print that out or order a card and I'll send it to you. There's also an era card too that gives you the eras and that's what that is right there. And I have them in a rigid holder so I can just flip it around and it's right next to me because I always forget what the dates are. So that one sold for eight sixty-five. dollars the guy on the horse. Next one is from the Hawaii cards, and this sold for $7. This is some kind of card, it's called a original serigraph, handmade serigraph. I think it goes this way. So that was a Hawaiian card, it's a linen card, and it sold for $7. I put up like 800 Hawaii cards lately because I got them in a big batch, and I just wanted to push them out, and I think I started them at $5.65 and above because Hawaii does sell. Next one is an Indian. I got a bunch of Native American. This is the Pueblo Indian. He's a dwell outside his dweller in the village. And this is a Fred Harvey card. You can see that right there. It says Fred Harvey. He was a uh, designer out there. I'm going to be doing a video on some of the artists. And Fred Harvey is one of them I got queued up for this year. Hopefully I can get more information. I'm not a real artist sign guy. I don't go after a lot of those. But when I see Fred Harvey on there, it always... I know it's going to give me a couple extra dollars when it sells, but this was the Pueblo Indian, Native American outside his hut, and this one sold for $7. So they do give me a little extra money. They might sit a little bit, but they do uh, go. Next one is Flamingo Orange Groves and Botanic Gardens in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They're picking oranges. they got sacks. They're a sack of oranges. This was posted in 1966. Just a chrome card. Sold for $4.65. Here's another Native American. These are just the chrome cards of a maiden and a daughter. And this was Navajo Mother and Child. And that sold for $4.65, unposted. Next one is the bird's eye view of Marion Ella Johnson College in the distance. Just a divided back of a college. Nothing special I found on it. Someone actually put in their booth a dollar. I don't remove those marks. I leave them. That's part of the history of the card. But you can just look at it and tell it's a divided back. And that sold for four sixty five. I didn't find anything special really about that college on there. Next one is China Town in San Francisco. Chinatown always sells. They're not the highest dollar one, but they do. People like to buy Chinatown. This is just a chrome card of Chinatown at night with the lights and everything. Sold for $4.65. So they do move. The sell through rate is pretty good on those. The pricing depends on what's in the picture. Next card sold for $6.65. This is a Forster Cottage in Killarney. This is an Ireland card and it was posted in 1939, I think, or something. Ireland and Scottish cards don't do bad. Ireland I've been doing pretty good with. I've got a bunch of those and that went pretty good. It's not a real photo postcard and it's been posted, but uh, when they printed it, it was just the opposite. And that sold for $6.65. All my Ireland cards, I always start at $5.65 and above, an extra dollar, because they do sell. But that was 10 cards sold overnight for me to, to show you today. Total dollars was $66.98, and if you take $66.98 and divide it by 10, you get basically $6.70 is my average sale price. So my for the year still, my average sale price is going up. I'm still over $70 a day for sure, and I want to do 14 cards a day average, and I'm at 13.6 is what my spreadsheet says. So I just can't break that 14 mark, but everything else is moving. Even though I only did $67 today, it's only $3 off 70. The other day I did 92, and the other day I did, 
you know, 110. So it's still in a way above the uh, what I was. My business is built on at 70 dollars. So I don't sweat it on there. I'm not worried about having a slow sale day. I look at them. How much money is in the checking account at the end of the month? I got money for the month to pay the bills, and what's left at the end, and I divvy it out, goes wherever. I don't look at it sale by sale, and I don't dig into the cards to get the extra 50 cents. I look for the outliers. But I'll take this $66.98 uh, every day. That would be great. So that's what's sold. And you can always check uh, smpostcards.com. We'll bring you right to the eBay store. There's a link in the description to take you right to our eBay store. And you can watch and see what sells in my store. I have close to 45,000 postcards listed. All different varieties. Real photos down to Chrome. Mostly divided back to Chrome is my niche, but I sell what I get and what I see for a good price. So you can see what I have out there, how I broke the store down. I don't hide anything. Anybody's got any questions, as long as it's not too personal, just shoot me an email at contact at smpostcards.com or put it in the comments and I'll reply. I just want to show you what I do and you can take and do it your way and stuff. Am I the most successful postcard seller out there? Probably not. I pay my bills. I put a little bit of money in my pocket every month. Mormon postcards. They Some sell, some don't. And we're going to see what to look for in these and what the sell-through rate here in a second. But there is a history with the Mormons and how they traveled to Salt Lake City and what they temp their temples are. And I found some information, a little bit of a couple paragraphs and stuff, a little more than that. But I think it's important to know that when you're selling these postcards and pricing them and looking at them. And I'll, I'll go through there. But while I do that, I'm going to show you some postcards of different Mormon postcards that are out for sale. Mormon history is intricately tied to the story of Joseph Smith, Jr., who founded the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS for short, in the early 19th century. Smith claimed to have received divine revelations and translated the Book of Mormon which he believed to be the ancient record of civilization in the Americas. The church faced persecution and hostility in New York, Ohio, and Missouri, leading to a series of relocations. One of the most significant events in Mormon history is the exodus known as the Mormon Trail. And the thumbnail shows the covered wagon on the Mormon Trail, is what I used. In the mid-19th century, the Mormons faced intense persecution in Navajo, Illinois, accumulating in the assassination of Joseph Smith in persecution. The journey known as the Mormon Trail began in 1846 and spanned over 1,300 miles from Nau Nauvoo to Salt Lake City, Utah. The Mormon Trail was a challenging track through hazard terrain and harsher weather conditions. Thousands of Mormons made the journey seeking a place where they could practice their religion freely and establish a community of their own. Despite the difficulties, the Mormons preserved, and by 1847, they reached Salt Lake City Valley, where they established Salt Lake City as their new headquarters. The Mormon Trail remains a significant part of the Mormon history, symbolizing the faith, determination, and resilience of the early pioneers who sought a better life for themselves and their religious community. The Mormon society today encompasses a diverse and vibrant community that continues to evolve while adhering to its core beliefs and principles. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, commonly known as the Mormons, emphasizes family values, community service, and spiritual growth. Mormons strive to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ and uphold a high moral standard. They are known for their strong emphasis on education with a commitment to lifelong learning and personal development. In recent years, the Mormon community has become increasingly global with growing presence outside the United States. The expansion has brought about a greater cultural diversity within the faith, enriching its traditions and perspectives. Additionally, Mormons actively engage in humanitarian efforts and disaster relief, displaying a commitment to serving others and making a positive impact on the world. Overall, Mormon society today reflects a dynamic blend of tradition, monetary, monarchy, and enduring commitment to faith and community. Now, I got four other things here that kind of relate to some of the temples we'll see on postcards. Mormon temples are considered to be sacred spaces where members of the church 
of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, commonly known as Mormons, participate in sacred ordinances and make convents with God. These temples are distinct from regular LDS meeting houses where regular Sunday worship services take place. So Mormon temples are distinct from regular LDS meeting houses. So they're temples. They're not the churches that they go in there and they worship in. Mormon temples are not open to the general public, meeting houses or, or chapels. They only are only accessible to the church members who meet certain criteria. Members must be in good standing, living according to the church teaching, and have obtained a temple rec recommend, a special card issued by the leaders before they can enter the temple. So I guess you got to be invited to go into these special temples. So if you see Mormon temples, puts in your mind is why I picked this one because a lot of the postcards you find are of the Mormon temples. And we're going to talk about how to look for those and how to differentiate maybe a higher priced one. The main purpose of the Mormon temples is to perform ordinances and ceremonies believed to be essential for salvation in the afterlife. These include baptism, confirmation for the dead, endowment ceremonies, and sealings, marriages, stuff like that. Mormons believe that these ordinances are necessary to unite families for eternity. Mormon temples are known for their distinctive architecture and design. And I think that's what we see in the postcards is what sell them. The different designs, the architecture uh, helps with that as well. They often feature white exteriors, multiple spires, and intricate detailing. The interiors are dec decorated with symbolic artwork and furnishings. We've seen that in postcards. The most recognizable symbol of the Mormon temples is the Angel Morani statue, typically placed on the high, highest spire. I probably didn't say that right. I'll put it right down here, Morani statue. These architectural elements and symbols hold deep spiritual significance for the church members and serve as reminders of their beliefs. Now, one of the biggest cards you're going to see, if you've been doing postcards, you've probably sold it or seen it, is the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Different views of it. It's the arch thing, and you can, you can just tell. When you see it on TV or you see it in a picture, you know it's the Tabernacle Choir. So they've done very well in marketing that. So the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, officially known as the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. And Temple Square is the big cathedral in Salt Lake City. It is one of the most renowned and oldest choirs in the United States. It was formed in 1847 and is affiliated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now one of the things about Salt Lake City just came to mind when I drove through that. I did some work in Salt Lake City for AOL on their phone systems back in the day, American Online. Did some uh, phone upgrades and stuff over and they were based out of Seattle I believe and we were in Salt Lake City for another service call. The streets they said are very wide because they want to be able to turn a horse and wagon around in the street. So they didn't want to go down the corner like we do and do a U-turn. They want to be able to turn them right in the street, is what one of the, people, the locals told me, which was pretty interesting how they designed it. The choir is composed, the Tabernacle Choir again, the choir is composed of approximately 360 volunteer s singers who come from a variety of backgrounds and professions. These singers are not professional musicians, but rather individuals who dedicate their time and talents to be part of the choir. Members of the choir serve for a specific period, usually about four to five years. So that was a lot of information about Mormons, but we talked about temples, their religious places, their history on the Mormon trail, where they're located, and stuff like that, and also the choir. And we're going to see how fast these postcards sell. How many postcards move through the eBay system? And some, and I got some higher priced ones here, so stick with me. And as you saw those other cards go through, a lot of those are common cards that you'll see out there, but there's a couple in there that were a little bit harder to find. Not a lot of them listed. But I went out there and I did the query and in eBay, and I cleaned it up. Basically, it's postcard space Mormon anything with Mormon in the title. And that's what you're going to see in most of the postcards. You're not going to see LDS, Latter-day Latter -day Saints, and stuff like that. You're going to see Mormon, is what most people I noticed put in the postcards. There was 295 sold and 5,900 listed with postcards based Mormon in the title. You times it by 100, it gives you a 5% sell-through rate. Now, 5% falls in the 4 to 5 range, which is the average we've been seeing through my videos and on my paper 
that I have out there on Ko-Fi is four to five is an average card. So it's not a real low one and it's not a real high one, but there is a couple that I found sold for pretty good money. But let me bounce up against some of these other postcards. So the Mormon is at 5%, postcard church is at 5%. So church and Mormon, doesn't really matter about the religion. It's 5%. Then the Amish I threw in there because it's a different type of religion, different type of beliefs. They're at 4%. And then I just put in Salt Lake City. I see that on a lot of cards. So I want to capture that, 3%. So just the city law, Salt Lake City, is only 3 and Mormons are 5. So th there is a distinction, a 2% difference with cards moving through. But with a 5% sell-through rate, when I pass up Mormon cards, they're probably not the first ones I would pick up in a box. If I see a lot of Mormon cards in a box of postcards that I was going to buy, I'm going to pay below average price for it because I know they're going to sell. 5% sell, 4 to 5% sell-through rate is going to give you your average time to sell postcards or not fast, fast movers. So I wouldn't pay up for them because you're going to sit on your money if you see the, a lot of those in a, in a collection. That's what sell-through rate does for me. When I'm going through a box of white box of cards or a shoe box, I can go through real quick and say, okay, 40-50% of these are pretty are above average cards move and I'm, I'll give you $110. A lot of these are average and below, I'll give you $50 because I know I'm going to sit on the money. And some, and probably 40%, 30% of the box, I'm not going to do anything with. So why pay for them just to have inventory? You don't want to get into a point of buying a box of postcards just to have something to list. You want to start looking at the sell-through rates and get better stuff that people want. Because you can put a box of 1,000 postcards up with an average or below sell-through rate, and you're not going to get your money back. But if you took your time and spent a couple more time looking for better cards, paying up just a little bit, you're going to turn that money and stuff faster. But you need a mix of variety of things. So you might want to mix in some of those average and a little below average cards in here and there. But you want to have some better sell-through rate cards. Up in the 9, 10, 12% range to, to keep the cash flow moving as well while you're waiting for these other cards to sell. That's how I think of it. It's kind of like a waterfall. you got some moving fast, some moving slow, some real slow, some that don't sell. So it kind of averages out but i found some extreme higher priced ones out there instead of not putting them in here like this one here they said rare but i use hard to find rppc and see that's written rppc that's written if not it doesn't say real photo that when you speak they said real photo when you write it it's rppc so they wrote it they're, so they're doing better than me so rare rppc of the mormon lds there's your lds church and when I did one query, eBay actually knew LDS was Mormon. It's kind of like Coke and Coca-Cola, and they kind of knew that. So anybody out there trying to fight the algorithm, it seemed like LDS picked up as well. The key to this is, it's not in Salt Lake City. This is a church, not a temple, Mormon church, and it's in Idaho. Daniel said something in a comment about Mormon churches to look outside of Salt Lake City. Instead of just looking in Salt Lake City for Mormon churches, the ones outside sometimes do better. And this reinforces what his tip was. And Daniel's from Mailzeum, so check out that channel. He does some different things with postcards and he looks at the higher end postcards. He does pretty good in sales and he gives a lot of tips on what he looks for. But $179.17 had seven bids for this real photo postcard. That's not a bad deal right there. So some of these real photo Mormon ones you want to take your time with them and get what you can out of them. Then the next one is Price, Utah, bird's eye view in the distance of Mormon houses. This is maybe like a village or something of Mormons, a congregate community. 145.50 with 16 bids. And these just sold April and May of this year. And then you got Tremont, Utah, Main Street, Parade, Mormon L LDS, a Mormon parade. $84. So if you get a real photo of Mormon cards or LDS, Latter-day Saints, I would do some digging and price it up and maybe all of, let's see, two of these were auctions, went for average 150 then the other one was a buy it now for 84 My eyes are caught on real photo Mormon postcards if I see them. But then we get back to earth, our average cards that we see every day in boxes and stuff like that. So here's three that sold high.
This one's Oakland, California. It's a, a temple in California. Remember, that's outside of Salt Lake City. 1149. Then here's another one in Montana. Twelve dollars. Then another one. Here, this is the great organ in the cathedral in Salt Lake City. Sold for thirteen. Average, you know, eight to fifteen dollars is the high mark, I think. And, but then you got your people doing the low. You got one for a dollar twenty-five. Here's the organ that we just saw throw for thirteen for ninety-nine cents. So it doesn't make sense for ninety-nine cents. Kind of rhymes. Then you got the here's one of a winner of two nine uh, two twenty five. So here's your lower cards and there's your higher the higher ones. So the higher ones are averaging eight to twelve. The lower ones ninety nine cents. It's a dollar fifty. And we just saw one of them on there. Let's see what these people are listing some of these cards for. This one here is the Mormon Tabernacle organ. We just saw the organ sold for twelve dollars and there's one out there for like ninety nine cents. And this one's for thirty four. Someone needs to look at their homework because. They're wanting to compete with the lower and the higher ones. I would probably put that card about 865, and then it'll go. If not a real photo postcard, it looks to me, and it looks like it's got a. It's one of those with the bag of salt. You'll see that too. The Salt Lake City one. They have this little bag on the side. Sometimes it has the salt in it. Sometimes not. Don't put those through the scanner. They're not going to go. The scanners don't like those. It's going to be too thick. Or if the bag is empty, it's, it's going to say, I'll probably jam up on you. So I always take a picture like this guy did with those. They don't give me any. I usually toss them uh, in the flea market bucket. I, I haven't been seeing anything special for these novelty add. It's an add-on postcard, what, what it is. You'll see some dirt from a gold mine on some of them and stuff like that. But I don't see any extra value in some of these add-ons. Uh, salt bag. $34 just because it has the bag problem. Then you got the, here's the organ again, the card that we saw that sold on the other page. And what did that sell for? That sold for $12, $13, and they got it for $40. And here's a large letter of Salt Lake City. Now this one, it depends. I'd have to look in the book and do a little research. Most large letters like this go from $5 to $12, $5 to $8. This one, I think, might be up in the $8 range, if I remember right. So $34 is really nothing special with this large letter that I would see. So if they wanted to sell and move on there, you could get that one impulse buyer. But why wait? move the card and buy something else. So the average thing we're listing is $35, 30 to $35. I think it's a little high for some of these cards. And then here's the same card that they got up for $34 before with the organ, and it doesn't have the salt packet, it looks like, $1.15. So you, someone put it up for $34, and there's a $1.14, and we saw an organ sell for $13. Where would you put that card? I would not even look at the dollar fifteen. I wouldn't even look at the thirty-four. I'd probably stick with eight sixty-five, the twelve dollars, if I wanted to move. Then you got a dollar seventy-five and another one, dollar seventy-five with the choir. So people are just all over the board with prices. So figure out what you need, what you bought it for. You got to buy them right. What it costs you to put it in the envelope. What it costs for your time. What it costs for everything you need to pay for. And that's your bottom that you can sell postcards for. If you bought these cards for three, four dollars a piece, you're not going to probably make a lot of money. If you bought them for a nickel, the 25 cents, there might be a little bit of room there for you on a four to six dollar card. You got to just got to sell a lot of them. So a lot of these are average cards, but your real photo cards and your harder to find ones, I would take a second look on those. That's Mormon LDS Latter Day Saint postcards. Remember, if it's not in Salt Lake City, they might get a little bit more money. Real photos do better than the average. And make sure you do your homework on pricing. Make sure you get what the value you need to run your business and buy supplies and put stuff, buy more postcards, not just to move a postcard for 99 cents. Make sure you go out there and do your homework and price it to what you need first, then go from there. And if it's not worth post listing, put it to the side and lot up, you know, do a lot of 25 Mormon cards. Sometimes those will do better for you. So if you just got one card and it's not selling high, put it to the side in your Mormon stack. And when you get 25, 50 cards, lot them up. People will do, buy those sometimes better than single cards. I don't do that. I just put them in the flea market bucket and take them to a guy that I know I'll move them. Because I don't have hardly anything in these cards that I buy. But who knew? Every Saturday, between 9 and 10, around that time, central time, 
you'll see a poll, and I got them scheduled throughout the year, of different questions I just want to find out. Some people send me some questions, I put them out there. So if you got anything you want me to do a poll on, or just a question I can't answer, and you want to see what other people do, let me know. I'll slide it in. Uh, under just send it to contact at smpostcard.com and put Mark Poll. Sometimes I take them, sometimes I don't. It just depends if I've done them already or if it's relevant to what we're doing on there. So take a chance. Send me a question. But this poll I did because I hear watching YouTube and talking to other people what they do. They go to the post office. They always get their receipts. They put it in the mailbox. They have a pickup. They pay to have UPS or someone come and pick up their stuff. So I wanted to see what most postcard resellers do. And I'll, then I'll tell you what I do. So when mailing post, uh, sold postcards, do you, was the poll. One, did put it in your mailbox and put the flag up. Bring it to the post office. Drop it in the post office blue box, those post office boxes on the corners or by the post office. Or what else in your residential mailbox with the flag up was 33%. 42% bring it to the post office. That's the highest one. 14% just drop it in the blue box. And 10% do other. We'll get some comments here. So most people bring it to the post office. What do I do? It's a mixture, but majority is I put it in the mailbox with the flag up, and my post carrier picks it up every day, Monday through Saturday. And I also have a P.O. box at my village post office. That's where all my returns, anything for the business, goes to that P.O. box. I want to check that box two, three times a week for any returns, envelopes that say they weren't forwarded. People send me stuff, and I do correspondence through there. So I want to check that every once in a while. I don't trust the little emails you get that something's coming in. Sometimes they miss a letter or something like that. But anything gets delivered to my business goes to that P.O. box. Some people also pay a service to come pick up their I think Grubhub and some other things or I don't know, DoorDash or something will pick up your packages and stuff like that I heard I, I don't listen to that too often because I'll never, I'll never do that here but I always try to swing by the post office you know, I'm retired, I have none but time some people don't have that but I try to get out as much as possible on there and I don't work hard not to get my packages out but not to go to the post office if I don't get my shipping done before my post carrier comes I just know I'm going to go over to the post there's a 10 minute ride that way. 10 minutes there, 10 minutes back, I'll stop at the store or get some gas or do something on the way or just... But another thing is, a lot of people say, what? before I get into the comments on here, a lot of people ask me why I sell postcards and not other stuff anymore. I used to sell a lot of toys, a lot of different hard goods and stuff, and I had a special van from the post office to pick up my packages because it was too much for the local carrier. And they didn't mind doing that. They'd rather have it come they could put it in the dock and pick it up. A lot of times in the summer when it wasn't real busy, Dana could get that into her truck. But a lot of times they would have a lot of boxes to pick up. But here's two pictures. So here, first one here, I'll put it on the big screen. That's about four or five hundred dollars worth of postcards and a couple of little ephemera things, paper things that I sold sitting right there on the ledge of my door. Four to five hundred. Here's what it looked like when I had four to five hundred of the other stuff I used to sell. Sitting on my porch waiting for the van. What would you rather? That's one of the things why I do postcards. Is because the one on the left, that's bringing in, you know, fifty to sixty percent profit, maybe more, on the paper. And those other ones out there, you're talking 40-45% maybe because I bought from distributors or paid up, I got supplies, I got time took a lot more time to pack those and materials and to put them on the porch and stuff like that so why not do postcards? Look at that it's just sitting there all right in my office, I can carry it all at once to the mailbox or post office I think this one I actually had a uh, pickup, I scheduled a pickup so I put the bigger ones on the porch and put the postcards in the mailbox and then they come to the porch and they pick it up which one would you rather do that's why one of the reasons why i do postcards is just this amount of shipping it's very simple to do compared to box and everything it wasn't hard but so let's get into some comments about what people said about this poll so michelle said she takes all my packages to to a pack and mail store. There are special mailing places that, are, that make money by you dropping stuff off at their store. 
I, I've seen those all over. I never used one. That I, I think I did in one time I was in some city and I had to send back a card or some piece of equipment that I was working on to another, I think it was to another tech needed something. I had it in my truck. So I took it and it had to be packed securely because it was a very expensive piece of equipment. So I brought it to a mail and pack store and they did a great job. But it cost like 60 bucks or something if I remember right. So pack and mail that thing. That was back in the 90s or whatever. But they always scan everything except postcards. That's another thing. If you take your postcards to the post office, yeah, it's secured in the building, but they can't scan it like packages. Remember, eBay Standard Envelope just needs to scan somewhere in the system. They cannot do an acceptance scan. So if you bring there and ask them to scan that postcard, it ain't going to happen. They can't. Their wands doesn't work with that. Only the high-speed machines at the uh, post office sorting distribution centers can read those is where they do those at. And she can mail any UPS, FedEx at the same time, so much better than our post office. So it's a one place all, and it doesn't cost anything extra. Everything's right there. So she's got it made. Michelle's got it made there. So keep them happy. Great. Thanks, Michelle. And then KS85224. Oh, just sold a postcard. Or a couple posts. Let's see what I sold here. Toll Plaza, old police car, Ohio Turnpike, sold for 565 so turnpikes, Pennsylvania Turnpike, Ohio Turnpikes, the older cards do well. So I just got 560. 85224 says, I usually take things to the post office and give to clerk, but if they're real busy and it isn't a high dollar item, I'll use the self-scan kiosk. On very rare occasions, I'll drop in the mailbox. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people do that. Me, if they're real busy at mine, I just go over and there's a little window on the end. Ken, the post guy, I just lift it up and slide my boxes in. Uh, on there. I don't have a lot of boxes anymore like, like I used to and stuff but uh, there's been a couple times where I had to get them out especially during the holidays back with the toys where I brought 50 box things they would just have me go to the dock and I'd unload them there. I didn't care about getting a receipt and a scan uh, as you're going to see here in a minute. I, I'm not worried about all that uh, metrics and stuff. It, I sell enough stuff where it, the average is fine. But thanks, uh, 85224. Then Adam from Pittsburgh Pickers, they have a YouTube channel. They sell postcards, ephemera, a lot of photos. A whole bunch of different things are located in Pittsburgh. And they do it full time. He says they schedule pickups with UPS to pick up with the rest of the package. Yeah, they, they have a pickup every day because they're selling stuff every day. And they pick it up and they just toss it in the bag with everything else. Thanks, Adam. Then Stephen James in my area. Now this, Michelle's got it made. Adam has pickups, 85224 goes to the post office. Me, I'm most of the time it's in the mailbox and two, three times a week I go to the post office. But Stephen James says in his area, and this is where the variables get in, the postmen people do not pick up at our homes anymore. That's weird. I can schedule a pickup for my larger items, go figure, but they will not pick up mail. I don't think you can schedule it for mail. You have to schedule it for packages. So maybe... Am I thinking something there? Because a postcard, you can't schedule it. You just put it in the mailbox with the flag up, and that's how you do letters. Which makes it kind of hard on my 83-year-old mother-in-law. Also, I can't just walk down the street to a blue box because in my neighborhood, they took them out because of the idiot kids dumping liquids in them and ruining the mail. Yeah, they. I don't see them that often. They're, they're by the post office here, but I don't see them on the corners around our village as we used to. Apparently, it had happen quite a bit but yeah so I have no choice but post office drop off sounds right but I think yeah I don't think you can schedule for letters if I'm reading this right packages you, you can schedule before when they first started scheduling stuff at home you couldn't do first class but everything's added now except letters is just put in there and put the flag up uh, when they deliver your mail but I, I so that's one extreme is he's got different issues there some places like the next one Joe uh, thanks Steve Stephen, I live in a rural town with no home delivery, so we have to go to the PO to pick up our mail. So that's another thing. They have to go to the post office because they don't have delivery. When I had my restaurant in a small town, about 15 minutes northeast of here, 
they didn't deliver mail to my restaurant. I had a P.O. box at the local post office, and it was only maybe a block away, so I would walk every morning and go over and get my mail, mail out anything, and then I would stop by the butcher and pick up the meat for the day for lunch, like pork chops or whatever. He was a meat cutter, and I always got fresh meat from him, and I would pay him weekly on whatever I got, so it worked out really well. But we had to go to the P.O. box in a small town. And everybody did. Like, it was like, go get your mail and come to my restaurant and have coffee because I was basically the only restaurant in town. A town of 1,000 to 1,200 people where my wife grew up. But yeah, so some places you don't have an option. Some places they have to drive 15, 20 minutes to get to a post office. So you got to add that into your cost, your business. So if you're selling socks for $5 like everybody else, you might have to try to sell them for 7 or don't sell socks. you got to sell them higher stuff because you got that other expense of gas and time. Thanks, Joe. And then Brian says, the flag goes up real easy on my mailbox. Yeah, I love it. I just go and put it in there. Like once I get done with this, these cards here, I'll just drop them in there. And it's no problem with that. So, but what's today? Yeah, today I won't be going to the PO. I have some other things going on. But that, those are the polls that I put out. So make sure you subscribe, you know, hit the little icon so you can be a part of it and see the comments people are talking about. And it might and you might learn something, it might just not be you. Everybody's having the same problem on there, but thanks for participating. I and when you do participate in there, if you don't put a comment, I have no idea what you clicked. But if you put a comment, it does put your name on there. But if you do any selections, uh, just vote. It's anonymous. I don't see anything in the back end except the number go up or down. Now we're going to get into viewer comments. Viewer comments come from emails, YouTube, or just people saying something and I'll, I'll capture them. I can't put every one that I get out here and just get too, it'd be too much. I try to respond to everybody. If I have not gotten back to you on a question, send it again. Hopefully it doesn't get caught up in the spam filters or anything, but most of the time I catch them. I haven't had anybody come back yet, so I haven't responded. Got three comments to go through here. The first one is from Sewing in the Mountains. Sewing in the Mountains. I have been, this goes back to the video where I talked when I went on vacation and I used a scheduled listing. I scheduled like 20, 30 cards to go up every day while I was gone for seven days. And I showed that in the video about what I did and how I'm going to use it going forward and this is a, co a couple of these comments are from that video most of these from that video sewing said I've been using scheduled listings daily for about three months now my sales have been very good using it instead of having all my listings scheduled for one certain time I scheduled them an hour apart yes it's an extra step but this means that instead of my store listings being seen at one time my store is seen throughout the day with the newest listings on eBay. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I thought about that. I've seen some other people create a spreadsheet and they'll put five here, five this hour, five this hour, five. I don't know what it does. I'm not, but it doesn't help. I, it's helping you. It might help someone else. I, I don't know. I couldn't answer that. But scheduling listings used to be 10 cents a listing. You had to pay for it. Now you can schedule your listings whenever for free. There's no charge anymore. So when I, a lot of people used to go on vacation, they would schedule 20 drafts for this day. You know, they put 200 drafts in there and then they'd log in while on vacation and kick off those drafts and uh, list them. Now you can just schedule them for the days you're gone and don't have to log in. Work great. It works fine. I haven't had an issue. And how I'm using it going forward and as of this today, this weekend, for Monday through Friday, I, for the Saturday and Sunday, I put five cards each, each day. So I got 25 for Saturday, 25 for Sunday already scheduled. I don't have to list Saturday and Sunday to keep active because I like to put up cards every day. I'm not a big algorithm fighter and stuff like that. I, they're not my competition. I just did it because I like to put more into the store. And so I put five a day. So I got 25 going off today on Saturday and 25 for Sunday. So I don't have to pull out the stuff for listing. Uh, on there is how I use it so I get two days of no listing by doing a little extra each day of the week but thanks sewing and Karen said thanks Mark Mark I wasn't using scheduled due to cost the 10 cents good to know it's free now better than having drafts up and having the list while away yeah so I think that'll, that'll help a lot of people 
if there's anything new out there that I missed, let me know because like Karen, we can't, I can't keep up with everything because I don't use every tool they give me. But Schedule did come out an email and I did see it and I started uh, playing with it a while ago. But I, it took me a little bit to figure out what I was going to do with it. I, I wasn't going to do the spreadsheet and do it every hour, every day. I just wanted to use it like I am. And I think it'll help me. I'm going to try that for a couple months and I'll let you know. But like Karen, she didn't know about it. You can't know everything. Things change all the time. So Karen now knows from the video that you can use it and it'll help her out. If you can just get one thing from one of these videos, it's worth my time and yours. Thanks, Karen. And Joe Mechanic, did I hear you right? I always like messages that start off like that. I'm sitting there, okay, where's this going to go? Did I hear you right? You send small photographs with just a stamp and envelope. No worries about them getting lost. Joe's a good guy. Uh, I'm not worried about it. When, but when you see a message, did I hear you right? It's like your mom coming at you or something like that. But it, it was kind of funny. But I, I knew it was from Joe. And he was just asking the questions. So no worries about getting lost. Yes, in that video I talked about a lot of photos and stuff that don't go eBay standard envelope. Like, let's take for example, my sh I got a bunch of photographs of naval ships that was in that lot of things I bought. They're actually photographs, and on the back they were cataloged but in someone's collection. And I sell those for $8.55. I ship those out in, a, in an envelope with a stamp and a label. I don't, it doesn't go eBay standard envelope, it's not part of that. And I'm not going to sell them for first class $5 because it's only eight fifty five thing. So I finally fell on that 855 price. I tried it higher, tried it lower, and 855 seems to be real well. And with the, the shipping, I just do free shipping and it's all added into the price. Never had an issue. Not worried. I got pennies into these things. Haven't lost one. I've never had a problem. Yes, I'll put small ephemeral stuff in the envelope stamps. That's how we did it before eBay standard envelope for years. We were never top rated. We were only above standard because we didn't have any tracking. Anybody said anything, your only recourse was you, you had to refund. That's all you could do. There's no fear. Even with packages, I don't insure stuff unless it's a huge dollar amount, but I don't sell the, that many of those high, high dollar amount things. I don't insure things. Out of the thousands and thousands of packages I sent, I probably had three that I can remember were damaged. I had one a truck rolled over it, a tube. One came in a plastic bag, didn't have the item in it. It looked like you know, it just got wet or something like that. And I can't. And the other one got caught in the mail machine. That was it. So I'm not waiting for the hundred-year flood. I'm not planning for the hundred-year flood. A lot of people do things because that one time, that one thing happened, and now their whole business is around that one thing instead of working about the 99 things that went right. I, I don't work that way uh, on there. So no, I don't have any fear of doing that, of getting things lost. If they pay, I ship. I don't fear about the scammers. I don't feel about all this other stuff. I, it's not in my control. I had a lady a couple weeks ago buy $150, $200 worth of postcards. She paid, I shipped. I wasn't worried about on there. There is a concern sometimes that you just think, okay, what's going on here? That's a bigger than order. They pay, I ship. And it gets out there and she came back and bought another 100 Fifty two hundred dollars worth of postcards, so you never know. But Joe did come back and says, "Great!" To, I told him what I just said here. He says, "Great to hear. I got a bunch of ephemera, some photographs I'd like to sell. I'll give it a try." In so many words like that. So put them in the comments, and I can let you know what I do and what I've learned. But I, I never have a fear about losing metrics. I've lost top rated a couple times, but they gave me a grace period for 30 days because I do that. I'm always running real close to the 95% of tracking updated on time. If you just miss one, while I was on vacation, I sold 71 postcards and one of them says I was overdue. Am I worried? Not at all. One out of 71 is not gonna change my store. It's not gonna tank you. Being top rated is not gonna give you that much over someone that's not sometimes. I didn't have it for years. I still sell postcards when I was above standard. Ne never uh, make decisions on the 100 year flood is what I always say. That's all I got today. Thanks for watching and here's some fish to watch. I'll catch you next one. Bye.